Hello and welcome. This is week six, Appetites, and we're looking at the science of appetites today. So we covered off in the earlier video the philosophy around appetite, where we talked about appetite having um, many, many different characteristics and many aspects to it. So for example, um, sexual appetites and um, appetite for drugs and these type of things as being quite different to the appetites that we have for food and drink um, when we're looking at the actual needs of our body. So given that our food is predominantly either energy based, in other words it's um, sugar based or fat based, or alternatively it's structure based, another thing, in other words um, aspects that the body requires to actually build parts of the body, so for example uh, proteins or um, other micronutrients as well would fall into that category. So we've got these two issues with the food. We've got the energy aspect of the food and then we've got the building blocks aspect of the food. And we have appetite for both. So um, there are systems, biochemical systems within the body which are actually managing how much and to what extent we're actually hungry for the energy and also the building blocks. So how does um, appetite or how does hunger actually exhibit itself within our body? You know, what, what's the relationships? Well, most people will describe um, feeling hungry that they've got an empty tummy, they feel that their stomach is, is not full, um, or they'll talk about not having enough energy themselves, so they're hungry, so therefore they need to have um, something to eat. And both of these are actually very scientific, so there's a very scientific process going on when you actually feel a bit lightheaded because you've not had enough to eat. Um, or if you, obviously, if your stomach's um, literally empty, then you have this feeling of a, of, of a void within your stomach. And it's a physical sensation that we're talking about. So here we have two of the really key, most important aspects of appetite, and they give us wonderful um, opportunities for target within the trim program. We've got the physical sense of having eaten, along with the memory, the near memory, the recent memory of, of having gone through the process. In other words, we've got all of the sensory processes going on in our mouth with the, um, the, taste, the taste and textures of the food, and in addition to that, the, the smells that we're getting as well. So we have all of these memories and uh, information like that, which are all being coordinated within the brain and, and saying to us, you know what, we've just only eaten. And of course, when this is not occurring, so when you have the experience um, yourself where you've eaten a whole heap of food and yet you still keep eating and you want to eat more and more and more and more and then half an hour later you find that you're bloated and oh my goodness how on earth did I eat all of that food well what we're seeing happening there is that the body is not recognizing the amount of food that has been eating so it's not monitoring properly the amount of food that's coming down uh, via the mouth into the stomach and it's not um, equally, it's not actually getting the sensory information coming back from the stomach. So in other words, the, the actual nervous response that's coming from the stomach is not being adequately uh, communicated to the brain, uh, not ex except to the point where uh, it's actually being interpreted in any case. So that's the first piece of science in any case. What we're talking about there is the sensory response to the food. So um, this has a very, very powerful connection to our appetite, the actual sensory experience of being full. Indeed, we can actually extend that further down the digestive system once we're getting down into the um, small intestine and the colon for that matter as well, in that we're getting sensory information coming back from our small intestine saying we've got enough in here, we've got enough to be processing at the moment, we don't want more food coming down here. Now, in part, that communication goes back to the stomach and says to the stomach, please don't let any more food into our system because we've got enough to be going on with, thank you very much. But equally, that information is coming and it's available to uh, your brain to actually say, it's time to eat, or no, it's not time to eat, there's already plenty down there in the small intestines. So that's, that's option one, which is, or item one with appetite, and that's actually to do with the sense of fullness. The second thing that is most critical is the sense of having enough energy and the energy available in the system. And in this case, what we're talking about is the sensing of sugar. So we're sensing how much sugar is actually available within our system. Now we've talked elsewhere about um, the kind of signaling and the kind of um, information which is coming um, to determine the extent to which um, the fats are actually being converted to sugars and the rapidity and the availability of um, you know, the, this, this great amount of energy which we're carrying around in our tummies or in our thighs or whatever. 
and the, the this is a sensory related um, process as well. So in other words, the body is detecting how much sugar is available within the bloodstream, and and so therefore available to all of the tissue, particularly the brain, and then actually sending out signals saying that you know what it's time for some more food. So we're getting the signaling coming saying that there's more more food required, more energy food required. So what we're talking about here, of course, is the insulin response. Now, the insulin response, um, insulin is manufactured in the pancreas, um, along with a lot of these very highly available sugars that are required for your functioning of your body, glucagon and whatnot. Um, but the problem that we have here, once again, is actually the extent to which the body is actually hearing this information. So the body may be saying, oh, we've got way too much sugar available um, in, the, in the bloodstream at the moment, you know, whatever you do. Um, you know, let, let's actually manage all of this, and it'll send the signalling off to the um, you know the brain, particularly the hypothalamus. But there's a, there's a terrific network of communication going on within the brain about this, and of course, what happens is that people become um, resistant to this information. So, in other words, we've got all the sugar, and we're not we're getting more and more insulin coming, but we're not hearing the amount of insulin signalling coming um, in in terms of what's happening there. Now, it's a, an extremely complex. Um, topic and we're only really just touching off on it but what we're, what we're the important aspect here of the science of it if you like is that once again we've got a chemical signaling now going relating to the amount of sugar which is available within the bloodstream and we can use language like the extent to which the brain is hearing this information um, and you know that gives us the the targets if you like that we're actually operating on with within trim so hooked into the whole subject of insulin, there's a, a huge variety of other um, chemical signals that are actually being produced around your body relating to the availability of energy as well. And, um, and indeed actually hooking back into um, you know, the actual control over appetite. And a good one is leptin, and you hear people talking about leptin, and just in the same way that we talk about leptin resistance um, in, in terms of how it's in, interrelating with sugar. We also have the same thing with leptin, so we get this leptin resistance. Now leptin is actually, it's manufactured in many tissues of the body, but particularly manufactured within the, um, the fat tissues of the body. So when we've got enough fat storage, the body produces leptin and a part of the brain actually hears this leptin signaling and says, we've had enough, we don't want to eat anymore. Now clearly this is a uh, a functioning which becomes very distorted and if you're a person who's carrying a lot of weight you can almost guarantee that this will be an aspect of what's happening is that the so the amount of leptin that's being produced in the bloodstream and the amount of appetite, so in other words how hungry we're feeling, have become quite disconnected and once again this gives us a marvellous um, target for what we're doing within trim. So I'd just like to talk a little bit about um, some of the ways in which the body um, can become hoodwinked and in some other ways where the body is not hoodwinked at all. So a grand example of this is the, um, the, the revolution of diet soda, so you know, diet coke and diet pepsi and these types of things have become extraordinarily popular with people who are trying to manage their weight and yet you know, what, what's actually happening here? What we're trying to do is we're trying to trick our body into thinking that it's had a, an intake of sugar, so in other words you've had this slice um, sugary tasting um, beverage that you've been drinking and what you're trying to to do there is actually say to the body you've had your sugar and therefore what really happens is that the body knows almost instantly that it's not getting sugar so it's not whilst the taste might be hoodwinked by this idea of what's going on with the diet soda the actual management systems within the body are not are not remotely fooled by this process and what happens in that situation there is that you are, you are deliberately making um, or setting up a system of mistrust within the body so that the body doesn't trust the signaling that's going on and all of a sudden we're getting added layers of confusion going on within this whole appetite regulation process. Now um, I'm focusing on artificial sweeteners there but the same thing actually applies with a whole range of foods and you know if you walk past any bookshop or newsstand you'll see books on, on diets where you have a look on the internet and you'll find the latest miracle um, you know, supplement or the latest miracle um, food that you eat which will allow you to 
um, lose weight and, and in many cases it's to control your appetite. Well what we're dealing with here is a food which similarly actually tricks the body into behaving in a different way. Is this desirable? I believe it is far more desirable to actually get into the consciousness and actually get the consciousness involved in proper recognition of what the foods are that you're eating and what their real nature is so that you then become hungry for foods which are of a nature which is most useful to you rather than um, trying to hoodwink the body into a different behavior. Hoodwinking the, the body into a different behavior, uh, in my opinion, will only lead to a problem in the end exactly of the nature that we're talking about with artificial sweetness. So the same thing will happen with any of these miracle foods that we're talking about which are tricking the body in this way. Eventually the body will say, hang on a minute, I've been hoodwinked here. All of a sudden then the body begins to mistrust all of the signaling. So we've all heard of the concept of emotional eating and um, you know what does that mean? Well there's a whole um, series of brain chemicals which are so-called emotional chemicals. So we think about um, chemicals like um, serotonin, um, cortisol, um, also uh, dopamine, these types of chemicals, they all, all have a relationship to the sense of well-being, so we have, have this well-being. And when we get stimulation of these type of well-being um, um, chemicals, and particularly when we're lowering some of the stress-related ones like cortisol and we're raising the ones like serotonin, then we become far less likely to be um, behaving from a stress-related response. So. Uh, emotional eating really relates to being highly stressed and actually um, creating conditions where we're actually emotionally going to try and satisfy um, an unknown threat. So other chemicals that are involved in, in this very complex interrelationship are things like um, norepinephrine which is a chemical made in our adrenal glands and it's an activation and energizing um, chemicals, so it's the one that has you getting up and going and wanting to have lots of energy and, and getting about your life and given that um, having energy is one of the main reasons for appetite then we want to make sure that we have appropriate stimulation of the norepinephrine. You know, it's, a, it's a grand example of, of a chemical that we'd like to see um, readily available so that we've got plenty of pep and plenty of get up and go. Um, so long as it's not at the expense of too much cortisol and so on. So it's a, it's a very, very finely set up balance here, but nonetheless, if it's all shut down because nothing trusts, trusts the other, there's no trust going on, then you know, we're, we're in a situation where we've got a, an expanding body and um, you know, we're in trouble. So what we want to have is for everything to activate itself up, get, get moving properly and get that communication going um, on the basis of good information with good levels of trust um, associated with that information that's coming in so that we receive the information and properly and take action according to it. Okay, so that's really what I wanted to speak to you about the, um, the science of appetite. What we're talking about is a range of um, physical and chemical signaling around the body um, which is telling the body that we've actually got, a, got enough or not enough so that um, you know, we've, we've not really covered off the particular um, types of signaling that would go on um, relating to the, the uh, essential building blocks, but they're, they're much the same type of thing. So that um, we, you know, we will have, and particularly as we start developing these intuitive um, eating processes within ourselves, we will actually have the ability for our appetites. In other words, what's coming into our mind that's saying, yep, you know what, I feel like eating such and such, whatever the food is, I, you know, I want to eat a banana or I want to eat an orange or whatever the, uh, the, the fruit is that we uh, are looking for or other kinds of food and then we want to have those thoughts as they're arising actually going out all the way out to here to a cell within a part of the body that's saying I need this particular protein precursor, you know, I need, I need this amino acid and, and it's found you know, well and truly within a banana and so therefore I should eat a banana. So when we get that communication going in that way then the, you know, the cell is actually telling us what we, what we need to be eating. So there are chemical processes involved in that, um, in, in that type of appetite regulation. So in other words the way in which the brain becomes stimulated and it, and it has to do with the way that the memories are actually being managed within the brain. So in other words um, there's a memory that the last time we ate a banana, yet yeah, we got that kind of nutrient. So that type of memory 
um, exist within um, the brain. So we have, have that kind of memory. And what we're doing is that the body, the signaling within the body is saying, mm, we're getting short of that um, amino acid, we're getting short of that amino acid. Goes and looks for the memory, the memory says banana, the banana thought happens in your mind, and we go out and we actually get the banana. So that's, the, that's how the building blocks actually get managed, and once again, this is a massive area of targeting for us within Trim, and a um, grand opportunity for us to um, completely revolutionise our appetite. So thanks for watching. Keep posting on, on the Facebook group any questions that you have relating to this material that I've presented here today. I'm very happy to um, respond to within the Facebook group. And um, you know, here's to having a grand appetite, one that actually satisfies your needs and um, you know, provides all the, the nourishment and nutrients on all of the levels that you, that you need within your body, mind and spirit. So thanks for watching.